Welcome back to this series. In the last two videos, we added user sign up and user login. In this video, I want to make sure that we can also protect routes. We got that token which we issue since the last video, that token we can store on our client. Now I want to make sure that we can use that token to access certain routes on our backend that are protected. Now for that, we need to add protection to some of these routes first. So let's do all of that in this video. Time to add some protection. We got our products and we got our order routes here, right? Now, there are some routes which we don't want to protect. For example, getting all products. That makes sense to be an unprotected route. Because if we were to create a front end for our shop here, we probably want to be able to present all our products even to unauthenticated users. The same is true for the get route to a specific product. Typically, we want to allow the user to get more product information before he has to sign up and then maybe buy it or whatever the plan is. However, other routes like creating a new product or deleting products or changing products and maybe all order related routes, including the get routes here, are protected routes. We want to make sure that not every user can access them. And therefore, we need some way of protecting these routes. A good approach would be to add some kind of middleware, which we can easily add to a given route that runs prior to that route getting processed to actually determine, does it make sense to continue or aren't you authenticated anyways? So we need to add some middleware that checks for a valid token to be there. And only if the token is there and valid can be verified. So it hasn't been fiddled around with on the client. Only if that is the case, we continue. So that's the plan, we'll add such a middleware. For this, I'll create a new folder in my API folder. I'll name it, name it middleware, you could name it off, whatever you want. And in there, I'll add my check off JS file, because this is what I wanna do. I wanna check whether the user is authenticated or not. I'll start with module exports to export something, and that something is going to be an arrow function where I get the request, response, and next. You probably know this pattern. It's the default middleware pattern we use in Express Apps. Now, I just want to create this function and export it in this file so that I can import it in my order and product route file and then use it in there to attach it to certain routes. If you remember, in the product route here, we have the post route where we also have that upload single middleware, which will parse a file. And this is exactly the same pattern I want to use. We can add as many handlers as we want and they will be executed in the order from left to right. So if I then add my check off middleware here, I will actually run through that first and only continue if we succeed. That's the plan. Now for that, we'll create it here. Now what do we have to do in this file? We have to call next if we did successfully authenticate. And we want to not call it, we want to return an error instead if we did not succeed. So for that, we need some information from the JWT package, or we need some help from that package we used in the last videos. There, we have a way of creating a token. Now, there also is a verify method, which allows us to verify an incoming token. That is what I mentioned in the last videos. The server can verify whether a token is valid or not. For that, of course, we need that key we stored on the server, and we need the token. So let's do just that. Let's import this JSON web token package in this file here. So I'll create my JWT constant and simply require JSON web token. And then in there, I will simply create a new constant, which I named decoded because the verify method will actually return the decoded token if it succeeds. And then I will call JWT verify. Now you might see there also is a decode method. This will just decode the token and not verify it. And as I mentioned in the last video, the token is not encrypted. So decoding alone doesn't ensure it's valid. It just ensures it's valid base 64 encoding, but that doesn't help us. So decode is only helpful if you want to get to the internals of the token after having verified it. 
If you didn't verify it yet, then decode makes no sense. And verify will do both. Verify it and then return the decoded value. So here is what I'll use, verify. And then I assume to get the token as part of the request body. If we don't, well then we will always fail here and that is exactly what we want to do. If we go into this middleware, which we only do if we added it to a route, if we go in here and there is no token present, then we should fail because then we got no token, right? So we pass the token here. The key is what we stored in our environment variable. So process end and then it was JWT key in my case here. I added this in the last video. And then the next argument are some options. I don't pass any special options here. And then a callback you can specify. So I will omit the last two values here. I just want to verify it like this. Now this method, verify, will actually throw an error if it fails. So what I'll do is I'll add a try catch block here. I'll try decoding the token. So I'll try this code here. But if I fail, then I will catch my error. And in here, I will then return a response where I set the status code to 401 unauthenticated and return a JSON object with the message of failed, just like that. If we succeed here in the try block though, then we get the decoded value and I will eventually call next to continue. And what I also can do is I can set request user data equal to decoded. So I'm adding a new field to my request. Make sure to pick one which you don't accidentally, which you don't already have so that you don't overwrite it. And now in future requests, which use these middle, this middleware in front of it, we could extract the user data, the decoded user data on that field. Now with that, we got a middleware. Let's now try it out. And let's go to the products uh, file a page maybe. And let's add it to the post product route. So get should be publicly accessible, but we want to add our middleware to the post route. So I'll first of all import it. I'll add a new const at the top here, check off, and I will require it from middleware check off. And this is now the function we're exporting there, which is a valid middleware function. And now in the post route here, I will simply add check off in front of this uh, upload single and the other handlers. So this will run first. I don't execute it. I will just add it like this and Express will automatically pass request and so on into this. Now let's try it out. Let's go back to Postman and let's create a new post request to products. Let's switch to foreign data again and make sure you enter valid data here and choose a file. I added a very Christmassy file here again. And let's now simply try this out. Let's now hit send. And first of all, go to headers and disable this content type and hit send again. And we get off failed because the token is missing. We're checking if we got a token in the body. So let's simply add one. Let's first of all, make sure we can log in. I'll create a new tab with a post request again to localhost 3000 slash user slash login. And as before, I'll add a header here, content type, application, JSON, and a body, raw JSON data, where I will set an email password combination that exists in the database. I'll again use test3 at test.com and your password was tester. Now, if we use that and we send this request, I get my token, so I'll copy that and now go back to the first tab where I'm sending the post request to products and I'll add my token key here and add the token as a value. If I now hit send, I still get all failed though. Now, it can be difficult to find out why. The reason is, that in this post route, remember we're getting form data, we're not getting JSON data. Now in the app.js file, we only got body parsers for URL encoded and JSON uh, content type requests. 
Neither is the case here, we got form data. And we're taking care about this with the upload single middleware, which simply parses form data uh, requests and extracts the file along the way, but it does this parsing. Since check off runs prior to this, request body will not be populated because it hasn't been parsed yet. Now one workaround of course is to switch the order here. We can put check off as the second middleware. We do this and I hit send here, then we do simply a continue. We just fail with the creation of the uploads directory here because I deleted it in the meantime. I would have to re-add it. If I do that, uploads, and I hit send again, it succeeds. And we can see the file here then. So then it works. This is one way changing the order. Yeah, we can do this. We're doing some unnecessary work here with the parsing uh, since we don't check prior to it if we are authenticated. And in general, we might not want to pass the token as part of the request body. Because what do we do for get requests? Sure, we could add it to the URL in a query param, for example, and we can do all of that. But a typical pattern is to put the token into the header. So I'll remove this key here. I don't want to send a token like this. I want to send it as part of my headers. And there's one common header we use for this, the authorization header. Authorization, as the name implies, should hold any information we need for authorizing a request. And there a token is typically sent by adding bearer, white space, and then the token. So the token you previously, previously sent here in the request bodies. Let me copy it again and put it here after bearer. Now why bearer? Now this is simply a convention used to indicate that this authorization header bears a token. It's basically an alternative to basic HTTP authentication. So hence bearer. The token is of course the interesting part. With this setup, we don't need to parse the body to get the token. We just need to have a look at the header. So in check off, we now get the token from the header. So I'll first of all simply try to get my token from the header and I can do this by accessing request header uh, headers authorization. If I do this, let's simply lock the token here. If I now again send my post request to create a product, it now fails here because I removed the token from the uh, from the body. Remember, I unchecked this here. I'm no longer sending it, so it fails. In the console log, we see this output though. So we did successfully parse the header. And that of course means we can now use the token from there. We just have to make sure that we don't include the bearer and the white space. So what I'll actually do is I'll get my request headers authorization and split it by a white space. I then access the first segment uh, or the second one actually with index one, which will be this part after the white space. And then I can pass my token here to the verify method. I'll save this and go back to products and now reword the order here again. So I'll now add check off prior to trying to parse the body here. And now if we save this, make sure that authorization is set to your token with bearer in front of it. And if I try to send this again, it now succeeds. If I change the token by, for example, removing the E and therefore I'll basically send an invalid token, it fails. And this is a nice middleware we can now use to make sure that we protect our routes. Let's add it to multiple routes then. Instead of just adding it in front of or in our post route here, I'll also add it in the patch route. So before we there have our main handling function and in the delete route, not in the two cat routes, as I mentioned. And the same in orders. There, I will now also import my check off middleware by requiring this from the middleware folder, check off. And I will add it there too, in front of all routes actually, because all should be protected, including the get routes. So getting all orders, posting new orders, getting a single order and deleting an order, everything is now protected. And now if I save this, we can try it out. We can try getting products and this should succeed 
even if we remove that header because it's not a protected route, if I try to delete a product though, for this, let me quickly get an ID like this one. So if I now add this in the URL as we have to do it for a delete request and I send this without the authorization header, I get all failed. If I add the authorization header, I still get it because it's still the invalid token. So let me revert this by adding the E again. Now it succeeds. And if I remove it just to prove this again, it of course fails. So this is now an option. And now let's check our orders. There we can just try to get all orders. If I don't add the token, it fails. If I do add it, it succeeds. So this is how we can now use the token, how we did add our middleware, which we can now conveniently add to any route that should be protected. And we're using the JWT concept for this authentication flow and for making sure that the client can identify himself to our server and access protected resources without the server having to store any information about the connected clients. This is now true stateless authentication implemented in our RESTful service through JSON Web Tokens. Now, with that, we made a huge step forward. We added authentication.